Hello, and welcome back to yet another retro channel. Today is our midweek palette cleanser and we're going to take a break from the Timex Sinclair 1000 and the ZX81 to take a quick look at my Ziff C64. And the reason we're taking a look at it is uh, if you watched the recent Repair-a-thon and got to machine number, I think it was machine 8 actually, I figured out that it was a PAL machine and I didn't realize I had any PAL machines. I also identified at that time that my Ziff machine was also PAL. And since I do most of my work on NTSC, I've decided that I need to convert this machine over from PAL to NTSC. And it's not that difficult a task. This is specific to the 250407. So if you have a different revision board, you're going to have a different uh, path to changing the uh, broadcast standard from NTSC to PAL or from PAL to NTSC, but specific to the, uh, to the 250407, obviously the first thing we have to do is we have to change out the clock crystal. Uh, the PAL crystal is a 17.73447 crystal, and the NTSC crystal is a 14.31818 megahertz crystal. So that's Pretty simple, we just have to desolder that crystal and solder this one in. Um, then there are a few more things that need to be taken care of. On this chart, and this is the uh, 250407 schematics that I uh, downloaded from Zimmer's website. For NTSC, I'm not sure exactly what this U17 is. I mean, U17 is the, is the VIC chip, but I don't know what 7700-001 means, but anyway, a difference between NTSC and PAL. On the NTSC machine, we need to have no C203. C203 is this position right here, and it is empty. C204 would be right here if it existed on this board, and it does not, so there's no C204. So C203 is empty, C204 doesn't exist, and R42, which is right here, right above my ZIF socket. That should be an 82 ohm resistor, and it is. So there's no changes to be made based on that chart. Now in this chart, we do have some changes we need to make, but uh, if you look at the first section, of course, U19 in this machine is typically going to be a 6567 Rev 8, and that requires at C86 and 82 picofarad capacitor. Now C86 is right here. And I have checked these color codes and that is an 82 picofarad capacitor. And it requires no resistor at R101. And there is no position on this board R101, so I don't have to worry about that. Sound carrier is a PAL only, um, but it is right here. This is a solder bridge. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. I don't think it matters either way, but I'm going to go ahead and take it off. And then the clock circuit. Y1, of course, is the, the clock crystal, so we'll be changing that. C70 is this capacitor right here. I don't know if you can see that, but this guy uh, for PAL is a 15 picofarad, and for NTSC requires a 16 picofarad. That's a tiny difference, and there's a 5% tolerance, so that's plus or minus 0.8 picofarads. So this will do for now. I don't actually have a 16 picofarad capacitor in stock. I have ordered it. So when it comes in, I'll go ahead and replace that as well. But for now, we're going to just leave the 15 picofarad in here and hope for the best. And then we need to have R26, which R26 is right here. Uh, this should be a zero ohm, so basically just a jumper. So I'm going to remove that resistor and place a jumper in place. 
R52 and R53 are these two resistors right here. And on an NTSC machine, they need to be 300 ohm and 390 ohm resistors. So I've got those to put in. And C107 right here, uh, this needs to be empty for a NTSC machine. So we'll be removing this capacitor. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start with the crystal. Okay, there's our new crystal mounted. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. We have a jumper here that needs to be moved to the next position over. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, now. Let's go ahead and remove that solder bridge. Okay, that's taken care of. R26, it's this guy here. We need to put a jumper in place. Okay, now R52 and R53 have to come out. Fifty two is three hundred ohm. And R53 is And then C107 needs to be removed, and that's this guy.
All right. That should be everything. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we get. This is comparing the video after and before with the new NTSC on the left and the old PAL on the right. You won't see much difference. There is a slight difference in the color of the blue if you look uh, closely at the top of the screen where the two meet. But I believe the retro tank is compensating quite a bit here. Uh, the biggest difference I think you'll notice is if you look closely, the dot crawl on the old PAL version is moving, flickering, whereas the, it doesn't seem to be doing that on the NTSC on the left. Okay, and the one other thing that we should see changed is that now our clock frequency on the CPU should read 1.02 megahertz rather than 0.985 megahertz for a PAL machine. So take a look, check our clock frequency, and we are getting a good 1.02 megahertz. So this machine has successfully been converted from PAL to NTSC. Minus the one thing we haven't done yet, which is uh, this little capacitor right here still needs to be changed from a 15 uh, picofarad to a 16 picofarad, which I will do as soon as I get the delivery from Mauser with my 16 picofarad capacitors in it. And that'll do it for today. So if you enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, that does wonders for the channel. Uh, leave a comment if you would. I'd appreciate that. Uh, that also helps the channel. And I love getting feedback from my viewers and engagement with my viewers. It's uh, kind of what keeps me going, as I keep saying. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you get notified when new videos are released. Share the video with as many people as you like post it out to social media i'd appreciate it and uh, be sure to check out my friends in our little um, youtube retro repairs group uh, that would be captain commodore joseph retro bits retro for you and 8-bit retro refix there will be links in the description below um, and we are having another uh, live on Sunday, May 28th, um, just discussing uh, anything we've seen going on in the retro world, any projects or anything that we've got going on. Um, just a basic general update uh, uh, live session, and we will be taking questions and comments from the audience. So um, that will be at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, or for those of you across the pond, that's 7.30 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Um, and a link for that will be below as well. And that'll do it for today. So everybody, please be safe and be well. And uh, have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye.